Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Abel Dinonaire has been seen in the following publications, Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Okay, um, on this edition of Ableton on Air, and this is also a podcast with Spotify and Anchor FM, um, able to speak up. Uh, on this edition of Ableton on Air and able to speak up, we, we are um, talking about the COVID update with Vermont. Um, uh, before we get started, let's, uh, let's deal with our sponsors. Um, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Muslim Media Corporation, and many others, including the, uh, support from, uh, you know, including supporters such as the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Yachad, New York and New England, and the Orthodox Union, and many others, also including Anchor FM and Spotify. Um, on this edition, we talk about uh, the Ver Vermont um, COVID vaccinations and COVID as a whole and COVID update. Uh, basically, Vermont leads, as of June 14th, 80% of uh, eligible Vermonters have been vaccinated, allowing the governor, our governor, uh, Phil Scott, to lift restrictions. Vermont forward percentages draw on state level data from the CVC, which includes some uh, data not reported uh, to Vermont as the Vermont Department of Health CDC data is more inclusive, but uh, detailed. If you want more information on this information, you can go to www.healthvermont.gov slash COVID-19. So that website again is www healthvermont.gov forward slash COVID-19 vaccine and uh, COVID-19 vaccine dashboard. Um, Vermont forward percentage is drawn on the state level, which is according to the CDC is not, uh, some data is not reported. Uh, this, uh, this data is subject to change. Um, in terms of things. Now, uh, vaccination by county age 12 plus. Okay. Um, Addison, 80, 83.3%. I mean, excuse me, 80.3%. These are people that have been vaccinated. Um, Bennington is 76.7. Caledonia is 68.6. .6, and we can have a uh, part of this website on... Um, on um, Ableton on Air. Uh, Chittenden County, which is Bur Bur where Burlington is, 83.5%. Um, Essex, 57.4%. Franklin, 
71.6, Grand Isle, 82.8, Lemoyle, um, 83.9, Orange, 71.7, um, Washington County, which where we are uh, in Montpelier, 82.2, Wyndham, 73.9, Windsor, 74.1, uh, Orleans, uh, Orleans is 68.0, Orange 71.7, um, etc. Now, dosage received, doses received uh, vaccine distribution, 910.1 thousand uh, dosages, dosages administered, um, 80, uh, 821,000.8 thousand. Uh, um, for uh, total people started vaccinating uh, 42.8 and then 407.6 total people completed the vaccinations. Now there are still around 30% of the world that hasn't been vaccinated. Please, we are telling you to um, become vaccinated. Um, though, although uh, religious-wise, there are some people that don't want the vaccinations or um, can't get the vaccinations. Really, if you you are um, severely challenged, severely disabled, um, like if you have really bad epilepsy or something, and you really can't get the vaccine, then you have to wear a mask. Um, uh, for more information on this information, uh, you can go to COVID-19 uh, vaccination registration, and the number is uh, for Vermont, 855-722-7878. That's um, 855-722-7878. If you have any questions on COVID-19, um, uh, 802-863-7240. That number again is 863-7240. Toll-free, the toll-free number is 833-722-0860. Now, um, uh, if you are deaf and hard of hearing, you can dial 711 on your device and they can tell you the information. Or you can also dial Vermont 211, which is sponsored by the United Way. Um, now, um, there's other information on this uh, website. Uh, let's go back. This is um, anything you want to say about COVID-19? Yes, 16 and up. Um, now, there's a difference for those that don't know and that are confused. Uh, there's a, a, a huge difference between Governor Scott, which is the state of Vermont, and the CDC, which is federal. Now, when I went on the bus this morning, uh, GMTA bus, to get here to, our, to Orca Studios, um, the bus driver did tell me that we still need a mask. It's a federal mandate. Governor Scott is federal. So if you're going into a federal building, post office, if you're getting on a bus, um, you must wear a mask. If you're going into a hospital, you must wear a mask. Um, it depends on your situation. Uh, no, do not argue with a bus driver. Do not argue with a... Or, or have a disagreement with, with a postal employee. Otherwise, you won't receive service or get on a bus. Now, if you have to go somewhere and you need to get on a bus, you have to wear a mask. Um, if, you, if you step into a doctor's office, you have to wear a mask. Yes, yes. Now, according to this website, um, there's... Uh, There's, um, 
that's the way I met. Yes, yes. Um, now, there's other information available out there. Um, um, now, according uh, to the data resources, if you're B B I P C with B I P O C, which is um, Black, African American, Native American, Indigenous, or Indigenous or First Nation, Pacific Islander, Asian, or two or more races and Hispanic, um, uh, contact the uh, Department of Health, and they'll give you more information on the vaccine and when you can go get it. Um, this uh, website here, which is at www.healthvermont.gov, is um, um, it, it goes by age uh, and ethnicity and um, um, you know certain things. It shouldn't, but it does. Uh, that's the way this website is configured. Um, now, um, according to Uh, here we go. Uh, now, this is really extremely important um, f for people to know about vaccination. Vaccinations uh, for people with disabilities and also um, regular people, um, but, you know, everybody has a challenge. Um, vaccinations really help people with, di with disabilities uh, and other people from risk of disease, especially infants. If you are scared getting a vaccination, then take someone with you. Um, <clears throat> uh, infants, who, who they haven't done infants yet or they, they haven't done um, small children. Um, infants who are too young to be vaccinated and children and adults who are immune systems are weaker. Vermont's immunization program works with families, healthcare providers, and community partners to make sure Children and adults are protected against vaccines um, to um, help with increasing the immunization coverage. Congratulations to the 25 um, primary care practices with high immunization coverage in 2018, um, 2018, 19, and 20. Um, um, now, if you want more information on the Vermont Immunization Program and COVID-19, you can contact the following number, 802-863-7240. That's 863-7240. Um, also, well, um, now, since it's summer, I know this has nothing to do with COVID-19, but um, mosquito-borne diseases are upon us. This is um, summertime, and you have little creepy, crawly friends uh, with wings, so um, we must protect against them. Mosquito season in Vermont begins in the spring and summer, but does not typically pose a health risk until the summer months. By July, which is soon, some mosquitoes uh, may be carrying viruses and cause diseases such as West Nile, the West Nile infection, and Eastern Equine um, Encephalitis. The Health Department of Vermont Vector Borne Disease Program is responsible for tracking and responding to mosquito-borne diseases. They investigate reported cases of the disease and collect and analyze data to detect trends in disease activity, collaborate with other states, um, agencies, and work to educate Vermonters about prevention. Um, mosquitoes from around the state are collected and tested for evidence of West Nile virus and other diseases. The department tracks this. So, um, you know, uh, the best way to avoid mosquito-borne diseases 
um, and prevent mosquito bites. The health department this summer uh, recommends wearing long sleeve shirts, long pants when outside. Limited time outdoors between dawn and dusk when the mosquitoes are most active. Uh, and use insect repellent that has been proven safe against mosquitoes um, like off or, or something like that. Um, mosquitoes in Vermont, the health department summarizes mosquito testing results before the human animal illnesses every week during the summer and every fall. Uh, it compiles data each year in a surveillance report. So for more information on that, you can go to this website. Um, now, along the sidebar of this um, website, uh, there's um, things like uh, food and wet waterborne diseases, um, let's go to that. Um, diseases can spread also, especially during coronavirus, through uh, contaminated food and water and can have significant effect on the health of communities. These diseases are often serious and can be life-threatening and regularly can make people sick in outbreaks. Some of these diseases can be spread from person to person and from animals to people. Um, on another show, I'm going to give uh, in, uh, information on what to give your, uh, is like if you have a seeing eye dog, um, or what not to give dogs or cats for food. That also can cause disease. Um, the Foodborne and, wet and Waterborne Disease Program of, of the Vermont Department of Health um, is responsible for tracking and investigating outbreaks and preventing the spread of diseases. These, are, or parts of these efforts in this program is coll collaborates with other parts of uh, Vermont state government and other state departments and federal health partners. Um, now, I'm going to go through, is there anything you want to say before I continue? Say about what? Um, you know, I'm going to talk about the foodborne diseases. Because <laughs> during COVID, you got to cook your chicken and cook your beef and cook things. You cook anything. Anything's got to cook. Yeah. Um, yeah there, in, in this... You get, you get, in, you get sick. You know, yeah. And, and yeah. if you have... You and Mm -hmm. And if you have, if you have um, disabilities or pre-existing conditions, it's very important for you to cook your food during the summer, especially during COVID. There are certain, in this section of the website, um, again, at www.healthvermont.gov, um, <clears throat> you can, uh, it's, it's www.healthvermont.gov forward slash disease dash control food and water. In this section of this website, um, there's uh, things like botulism, um, there, um, and you can read more about that. There is uh, cryptoliosis, there's, there's listeria, and uh, E. coli, and noroviruses. Uh, a norovirus, if you don't cook your food properly, um, is highly contagious, and it's a highly contagious vi vi virus that causes vomiting and diarrhea. Yeah, and, yeah. and you can and um, you can get uh, shingles and fibrosis and other things. And years ago, there used to be something, and there still is. Um, called trichinosis means for uh, if you if you cook pork um, or pork chops or ham or anything and you eat it raw without cooking it you can get something called trichinosis which is c which causes worms in your stomach. Um, so anything you want to say about that? Well, I know 
I gotta make sure everything's cooked. Yeah. You know, to prevent all these <coughs> these food disease coming through. <laughs> and for those that want to know more about food and water and waterborne diseases, I will be doing a section on able to cook about that. And you can go to www.orcamedia.net for able to cook, which will be back soon. Um, um, and that's also sponsored by Washington County Mental Health. Now, uh, along this um, uh, sidebar of this um, website, there's other diseases. Now, there's something I've never heard before. before. Oh, here we go. Um, zoonotic diseases. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that are spread from animals to humans and that can be passed through direct contact of the affected animal or contact with areas where animals live. Wildlife, wa livestock, and even parks spread of the zoonotic diseases to people. Um, now, speaking about that, I know we have eight minutes left, but we might go a little over. Uh, talking about disease. Now, um, on able to speak up on the podcast, I spoke about Louis Pasteur. Um, but uh, Louis Pasteur, um, talking about disease, he came up with the rabies, the rabies vaccine, and he came up with the cholera vaccine, and um, he was in charge of, chem he was a chemist and microbiologist, uh, renowned, and we could show a picture of Louis Pasteur. Um, he was renowned for his discoveries and principles in vaccination, microbial, uh, sorry, and fermentation. Um, Pasteurized milk, pasteurized cheese. Um, his research in chemistry led to the remarkable breakthroughs in the understanding of the causes and preventions of diseases. So, um, you know, and he was um, uh, he was born December twenty seventh, eighteen twenty two, and died September twenty eighth, um, eighteen ninety five. So. Without Louis Pasteur, and without also, uh, and we'll have a picture of Jonas Salk. Without Jonas Salk, you wouldn't have the polio vaccine. Yeah. Who got the chickenpox vaccine? I think that was part of it, but I can double check. Um, yeah, the the polio vaccine. Let me see. No, uh, the chicken. Wait. Jonas Salk. Okay. Jonas Salk uh, was born. Now we have a picture of him. Jonas Salk was born um, April 28, 1914, and died uh, June 23, 1995. Yeah, um, he was an American. Um, a biologist and medical researcher who developed one of the first successful polio vaccines. He was born in New York City and attended the City College of New York and the New York School of Medicine, NYU. Um, <coughs> New York University School of Medicine. Salk, <coughs> in 1947, Salk, uh, S-A-L-K, accepted a professorship in the School of Medicine and the University of Pittsburgh. It was there that he undertook a project and determined the number of different types of uh, polio viruses starting in, eight, in 1948. And for the next seven years, Salk himself devoted himself towards developing <coughs> a vaccine against polio. Uh, Salk was immediately hailed a miracle worker, and the vaccine success was made public in April of 1955. So um, by 1959, Salk's vaccine had reached about 90 countries. Um, and he made up a oral uh, vaccine 
which um, was good too. So without uh, Louis Pasteur and Jonah Salk, you would not have what you have today. And it's extremely important to realize that uh, when you get a vaccine, it saves your life. So we are asking um, us at, at Ableton on Air, we are asking Vermonter to please those that are not coronavirus vaccined yet, please, please, it will save your life, especially now um, that the variants or might be here for a while. So uh, it's better to be protected by a vaccine uh, and it's 90% effective. Um, please, we are celebrating. Who? Who? Oh, we have time to look that up. The TB vaccine? Um, the vaccine known as baculus, I can't pronounce it, uh, baculus uh, camelot urine or BCG was developed between um, 19 okay. was developed between 1908 and 1921 and is administered in more one in, in more of 100 children 100 million children around the world every year. In the U was 1890 by Robert Koch. Ah, okay. Robert Koch, you mean? Koch. K O C H. All right. Robert K O C H. Yeah, that's what I said in eighteen nineteen in eighteen ninety. Yeah, this is him. Uh, Robert Herman Coach um, died in nineteen ten. Was a German physician and microbiologist, and discoverer of specific uh, agents and in deadly infe infectious diseases, including tuberculosis cholera and anthrax and he helped Louis Pasteur and he was the father of um, and is the father of bacteriology his discovery of the anthrax bacterium or bacillus uh, and and um, uh, in 1876 was considered the birth of modern bacteriology his and the last thing before we end the show, his discoveries um, directly provided proofs and germ theory of diseases and the scientific basis of public health. Um, so with that said, please get your vaccinations. It's extremely important. Without, the, without them, we would not exist or we would be sicker than most and especially people with disabilities who have pre-existing conditions is extremely um, important for everybody to be uh, vaccinated. So with that said, um, we would like to thank, we're gonna go a little over, but that's okay. We would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Muslim Media Corporation and many others, including um, uh, the help of the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Yachad, New York and New England, and the Orthodox Union, and the podcast, Able to Speak Up, is on Anchor FM and Spotify, um, and it's, uh, please tune in to this uh, important edition of uh, Able to Speak Up and um, Able Then On Air. This puts an end to this edition of Able Then On Air. Please go get your vaccination. <laughs> I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. <laughs> Able Then On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities. 
to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Abel Dinonair has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Abel Dinonair is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England, Chapter.